Watching footage of people who care for animals professionally release them back into the wild after they've been rescued from disaster or nursed back to health from sickness and injury. However, there are some animals that should never be sent back out to the forests or jungles of the world. There are some pets that you should never send back out into the real world. These are pets you should never release in the wild. Number 15. Alligator the power of a kindness is amazing, and it goes a long way when you're trying to bond with an animal. Take this guy, for instance. He's developed such an incredible friendship with wild alligators that they never want to leave. After months of building their trust and often nursing them back to health, they're none too keen to return to the wild. Yeah, and that's but the años, but that. And who could blame him? He treats them like they are his children, and they consider him a father figure as he assures them that life on the outside will be okay. Most have found their way to him after they have been injured. They were no doubt looking for a safe haven to rest and recuperate, and have found their guardian angel in the process. It's obvious he's a very caring individual as he speaks to them softly, reassuring them that everything will be okay. But the wildlife is just not not for them, as they return time and time again to catch up with the man they consider their dad. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or Slenderman will come from under your bed while you're sleeping. <laughs> now, it's time for the odd topic. Now, this should go without saying, but here goes anyway. If you own a pet lion, don't release it in the wild. They are aggressive, dangerous things, and if you've managed to domesticate one, maybe it's best to keep it that way. The guy in this photo, Clark Levy, had forced a lion to be his pet against its will, only to change his mind a few years later. Shortly after this photo was taken, he released it into the wild and, from what we've been told, caused so much trouble it had to be tranquilized by the local authorities. Yikes. Let that be a lesson to all of you. If you have a pet lion, keep it at home. Remember to comment down below with the hashtag oddtopic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. And now, to the next topic. Number 14. Ferrets. The ferret is a popular but often controversial pet. It's also one that, once domesticated, should not be returned to the wild. In fact, if a pet ferret escapes its enclosure, it's unlikely to survive more than a few days on its own. A small, furry creature, the ferret is a domesticated form of European polecat and is related to wolverines, ermines, minks, and weasels. <laughs> Its fur is typically brown, black, white, or mixed, and it has a cone-shaped nose, long tail, and a long, pear-shaped body with short legs and long claws. These little guys have a lifespan of between 5 and 10 years and commonly dine on rabbits and mice. They have a short digestive system and quick metabolism, so they need to eat frequently and are often seen out hunting around the hours of dawn and dusk. Experts believe ferrets may have been domesticated so that they could be used by the Romans for hunting, with DNA analysis suggesting this may have happened around 2,500 years ago. Naturally, wild ferrets have established themselves in areas where there is no competition from similarly sized predators, such as several remote regions in New Zealand, including the Shetland Islands. Number 13. Aquarium Fish Why anyone would think it was a good idea to release an aquarium fish into the wild is beyond me, but apparently it's a relatively common practice. Having a fish as a pet is popular in Australia, with an estimated 60% of households having at least one. This number is expected to grow as fish are considered a convenient pet for small houses. Plus, studies have shown keeping them can lower your blood pressure and your heart rate. But unfortunately, what they're not good for is the environment. It's hard to find such a good quality goldfish. 
If you decide you no longer want your pet fish, it should not be released into any waterway, even if it is a species native to the country you live in. Doing so will mean they have to fend for themselves, something they're not used to. If they do survive, they may become a pest, outcompeting native species. They may also introduce diseases into the waterway. So if you no longer want your fish, try giving it away to family and friends who already have fish, or contact your local pet store, as they may be willing to take it from you. Number 12. Parrots. In the wild, parrots are often found in tropical and subtropical regions. As pets, they are born into captivity and form close bonds with their human families. They are normally kept alone and heavily rely on their caregivers to entertain, feed, and house them. What you doing? You dancing? <laughs> If they escape or end up in the wild for one reason or another, the situation would be dire for the colorful little bird that is often quite chatty. In fact, the skills they've developed or been taught whilst acting as a companion to their owners are often the exact opposite of what is required in the outside world. To survive in the wild, a parrot must adapt to the harsh environment and fast. They face the very real pressures of starvation, being attacked by predators, and encountering extreme weather conditions, conditions they were once protected from. Another concern is that birds that have been in captivity for a long time, even those that have been well cared for, may have been exposed to diseases that could prove fatal to wild birds. In almost all cases, it is strongly advised that caregivers try to rehome their feathered companions if they are no longer able to keep them. The wild is no place for a domesticated parrot. Number 11. Snakes. Unlike the parrot, the snake has more of a reputation for being at home in the wild, but the reality is many households have them as pets. More often than not, these domestic snakes were originally bred in captivity. Others may have been caught in the wild and brought home by an overexcited family member keen for an unusual new addition. Although wild at first, they soon learn what is expected of them and lose all sense of what would be required to survive in a harsher environment. Many pets snakes are released into the wild. When, when, you hold, when you hold them, they make you calm. Their owner may have grown tired of them, lost interest, or they've simply grown too large. Whatever the reason, it's never a good idea to just dump them and run. In a technical sense, they can survive, but they have to overcome a number of obstacles first. They must be able to find enough food, avoid being run over by a car or eaten by a predator, and they need to find a warm shelter. If they're lucky enough to survive, they may become known as an invasive species, and this can have serious implications for the greater ecosystem as they compete for limited resources. With their lives literally hanging in the balance, it's important to consider the many other options available if you want to get rid of your pet snake. Find a reptile rescue shelter that can care for the snake, contact the store or breeder you purchased it from to see if they can help, or talk to the local zoo. Number 10. Rabbits. It's no surprise that baby rabbits have the best chance of survival when they are cared for by their mothers, and this includes mothers of the human variety too. When born in the wild, baby rabbits normally leave the nest at just over two weeks old and are left completely alone by three weeks. Can you imagine? These little guys are no bigger than a softball, so it's not surprising that their chances for survival are slim. If you have a pet rabbit, don't ever think it's a good idea to release it back into nature. You're not being kind. It's actually very cruel to abandon a pet, particularly one born in captivity that has no idea how to rough it in the wild. Unfortunately, every year, thousands of rabbits are released into the great outdoors, left to make it on their own, battling the elements and the many predators out there. European rabbits have been domesticated by humans since ancient Rome. They have been selectively bred for the purpose and have been dependent upon humans to feed and house them for hundreds of years. Abandoning a pet rabbit isn't only illegal, it's unethical, ecologically destructive, and inhumane. Number 9. Tegus 
When it comes to exotic pets, people often purchase them with no real understanding of what they're getting themselves into. Many start off extremely small, like most babies. But as with any baby, they grow very quickly. The tegu lizard, for example, starts out life at between 7 to 10 inches long, but grows very quickly, up to an inch a month. The female usually reaches around three feet and males up to four and a half feet in a very short time frame. It's easy to see why then that some are released into the wild. Their owners just have no idea how quickly they will grow and how much work they require. In 2019, a three foot tegu was discovered in a backyard in Chicopee, Massachusetts and the environmental police department were called to investigate. Once officers arrived on the scene, they found the exotic lizard which they believe had been abandoned by its previous owner. Police Lieutenant Tara Carlisle wasn't surprised by the find given that people often purchased exotic pets without understanding what they were getting themselves into. The tegu is among many pets that can live upwards of 20 years and can become expensive. This coupled with the fact that they're often difficult to domesticate and can display unpredictable behavior led to escapes and even the intentional release of the these animals. When this happens, the fallout can be catastrophic. If the animal doesn't die as a result of predation, exposure, or starvation, it may find a mate, proliferate, and become an invasive species. Invasive species cost the global economy over a trillion dollars each year. As for the tegu, well, this exotic escapee got lucky and is living in a reptile care facility while police attempt to track down its owner. Number 8. Green Iguanas Sometimes, through no fault of their own, people's circumstances change and they are unable to keep their pet. See the way he was shaking his head and he's coming in a faster way? The responsible pet owner looks to rehome their beloved companion or seek assistance for other suitable options. Unfortunately, the irresponsible pet owner takes the easy way out and just dumps them somewhere. The lucky survive, perhaps even long enough to find themselves a new home. The unlucky will die, often at the hands of a predator in the wild. Out there, the only rule is kill or be killed. It's not a place for a domesticated animal, that's for sure. How people can simply throw their beloved companion to the wolves, so to speak, is beyond me. The green iguana is one of those pets. These are popular with the exotic animal lover, but like the tegu, they grow quickly and become more difficult to take care of. Owners think that by releasing them back to nature, they're doing them a favor. They belong there, surely. Well, that isn't the case. A lot of these pets are born in captivity, specifically for the domestic market, and they're not used to living in the wild. In fact, they have absolutely no idea how to survive. Dumping them is effectively just as bad as leaving a baby in the woods. Both are extremely vulnerable and unable to fend for themselves. The iguana can also cause problems with the environment. There have been so many released in California, Florida, and Hawaii that they've started a colony, competing for food with and even preying on native species. This animal has now been banned in order to protect native species in their forests. Number 7. Giant African Land Snails this animal is actually illegal in the United States because it's considered an invasive species, capable of causing significant damage to the environment. So there you have it, that is my rescue snail Shrek. Unlike the everyday garden variety snail, the giant African land snail is huge, with the largest becoming up to 15 inches long. That's one big snail. For those interested in keeping one of these as a pet, the news is all bad. They're simply not allowed in the U.S. Their history can be traced back to 1966 when a young boy brought three to Miami. Unfortunately, his grandmother wasn't exactly pleased and when he could no longer handle them, she released them into the wild. 
It seems like a relatively innocent decision, given that's where snails usually reside. However, they ended up taking on a life of their own. Seven years after they were released, the giant African land snail population boomed to over 18,000 and was creating quite the name for itself in the environment. And the news was all bad. Due to the damage they caused, the state of Florida had to spend over a million dollars to get rid of them, a task that took 10 years years. Number 6. Turtles. Turtles are really cute. The slow-moving creatures are cold-blooded. This means that their internal temperature gauge varies according to the ambient environment. Keeping one as a pet takes significant commitment and isn't a decision that should be taken lightly. They should also be bought from a reputable pet store or breeder, not taken from the wild and rehomed. The same can be said for a domesticated turtle born in captivity. It should not be released into the wild. Unlike your average cat or dog, a turtle can live a long time. In fact, some species can live up to 80 years. That's a long time to have the same pet, particularly if it's not the easiest to look after. Before taking one on, it's a good idea to do plenty of research, including finding out what they eat, their habitat, and any other special requirements. For most species, an aquarium is not sufficient, but if they outgrow it, don't think returning them to the wild is a good idea. Turtles kept in captivity don't have the skills to cope in the water and will not survive. They also may not be native to the area and should not interbreed with wild turtles. Many carry diseases or parasites that could harm the local population, so if you no longer want a pet turtle, look to rehome it domestically instead. Number 5. Cuban Tree Frogs Cuban tree frogs are one of the largest tree frogs in the world. They are native to Cuba and the Bahamas, but mainly inhabit islands in the Caribbean region. They also make great pets and are popular among exotic animal lovers. Unfortunately, as is occasionally the case with pets, owners get bored of taking care of them. Some even go to the extreme of letting them escape. This has become so common with the Cuban tree frog that they now populate parts of Georgia and Florida. Now, there are so many of them in the wild, they are considered an invasive species and create quite the chaotic disturbance to the environment. The frog quickly grows out of control, preying on native species like lizards, tadpoles, small snakes, and other tiny animals. They have a huge appetite, and although not as large as some predators, there is no natural predator that is capable of controlling their population. As a pet, they are fairly easy to care for as long as they get enough to eat and drink, but in the wild, they're dangerous, ruining a large portion of Florida's ecosystem. The best place for a Cuban tree frog is in a cage at home, where it can remain happy and healthy. Number 4. Hermit Crabs when it comes to pets, make sure the hermit crab never makes your short list. They are not an appropriate pet under any circumstances. Hermit crabs use abandoned seashells as mobile homes. Unlike their name would suggest, these crabs like to be surrounded by friends. They thrive in large colonies and enjoy climbing, foraging, exploring, and eating together. In their natural habitats on tropical seashores, they can live upwards of 30 years, but this timeline can be seriously reduced if kept in captivity. Most won't live for more than a few months to a year. Tap water will also slowly poison a hermit crab, and if it's kept in a confined space, they'll have difficulty molting, which will eventually kill them. Hermit crabs are not starter pets or trinkets. They are complex, sensitive creatures who prefer to to live in the wild rather than a cage. For those that insist on keeping one in captivity, once domesticated, they should never be released back into the wild. In most states, it is illegal to release a pet into the wild, even if that was where it previously lived. 
Additionally, most hermit crabs are not native to the US, so as well as risking punishment, you will also disrupt the ecosystem. If you feel like you have no other option but to release it, make sure you travel to an area where your particular hermit crab species is native and release it there. If you find yourself in trouble with the law, however, don't blame us. We did warn you. Number 3. Wolves. This large canine is native to Eurasia and North America. It is also closely related to both the coyote and golden jackal, and has a reputation for being a vicious pack animal. Quite the social butterfly, the wolf's nuclear family consists of mom, dad, and their offspring. There are up to 38 subspecies of wolf, and a global population of an estimated 300,000. Wolves have a long history of interactions with humans, with most despising and hunting them due to attacks on livestock. Others respect them and dedicate their lives to caring for the largest member of the Canidae family. Unlike dog pups, wolf pups are usually taken from their mother at the age of 14 days. They also require a lot more socialization in order for them to properly imprint on humans. Wolves are trainable, but not to the degree that dogs can be. In fact, they take a lot more work to obtain the same degree of reliability seen in most dogs. They are not an easy choice, and some are euthanized or released into the wild. Here, they are likely to starve or be killed by wolf packs that are already established in the area. Releasing a wolf into the wild that has been born in captivity is simply cruel and shouldn't be done. Number 2. Chimpanzee the chimp is a species of great ape native to the forest and savanna of tropical Africa. It learns from its elders how to survive in the forest, so if kept in captivity, it may be denied access to these essential skills. If released back into the wild, a chimpanzee won't know what to eat, where and how to find food and water, how to make tools, and how to avoid predators. Essentially, these lovable little characters, which are listed as an endangered species, would lack the instincts necessary to live independently in the wild. As pets, they are completely dependent upon humans for their survival. In Africa, there are at least four subspecies of chimpanzees. <laughs> Each has its own physical and genetic characteristics. In the United States, many have been bred indiscriminately, and if released into the wild, it could disrupt the genetics of current populations. They could introduce diseases to wild populations, potentially wiping out thousands of chimpanzees. Number 1. Mouse Having a mouse as a pet is a popular choice for many. They hang out in their cage, often in a child's bedroom, and are occasionally released to spend quiet time with their owner. Some enjoy a cage filled with tubes and tunnels, maybe even a hamster wheel. They don't take too much work, and they certainly don't eat much, so why then would anyone decide to release them into the wild? Of all animals, a tiny little mouse would be the last thing I would consider suitable to be released into the wild, especially one bred in captivity. A domesticated mouse will die die very quickly as it doesn't have the correct genetic traits for wild survival. Wild mice, on the other hand, have developed genes that help them survive. Even so, only 5% of them will survive the first year, so you can imagine how small the chances are for a domesticated mouse. Only the smartest, fastest, strongest, healthiest, and luckiest survive to reproduce and pass on their genes, and a pet mouse will not be among these lucky few. If you must give up your tiny rodent, find someone in your area to take it as a pet. Sometimes, people find themselves in a position where they can't keep their pet. Some people do the right thing and rehome them. Others think the best option is to set them free by releasing them into the wild. This is a really bad idea for all sorts of reasons, not the least of all their limited chance at survival. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!